Hello, I'm Michael Barber in the College of Education and Health Sciences at Troy University, and I want to demonstrate something that I think all students should consider doing. So here I am logged into Canvas, and I'm in my dashboard here, as you can see. And what I'm going to do is if I scroll over to the top left-hand navigation menu over here, you'll see the top item is account. And in my case, you can see that I've got my picture here. Um, in your case, it's probably just a gray icon unless you've already added your picture. Now, if I click on this, one of the things you'll see is I get a, a bunch of different options here. One of which is profile, where I can go in and actually put my picture in there just by scrolling over this, and you'll see this pencil pops up. And if I were to click on that, it would allow me to put in an icon or an image of myself, a picture of myself. Uh, it allows me to update my biography and, and those things. But um, the main thing I want to show you over here, you'll notice the fourth item down now is settings. So if you click on settings, there are a couple of things here that I'd like you to do. The first is if you look over here in the top right hand side, you will see that there's email addresses and right now there's a, probably a star by your at tu.edu email address. You can actually go in if you are the type of person who doesn't check your TU email address as frequently as you should, but there is another email address that you do check quite frequently, you can actually go in and add that. So you can see here I've added my Gmail address to this particular uh, function and all I did was I clicked on plus email address here and then I just typed in my email address and said register email. It will actually send you an email to make sure that it's your email that you're doing so one of those um, you know notifications you've signed up here if you agree with this click yes and by all means do so. The other thing that I note over here is that you'll see there's this other contacts and one of the things you can put in here is you can actually have this set up so that Canvas will text you certain alerts and you can decide which alerts it will send you uh, by which medium and I'll show you how to do that in the next step but if you were interested in doing that you would click on the plus contact method right here and it comes up and you punch in your cell number you select which carrier that you have and then it will automatically generate the email address for you. And then you just click register SMS and it will actually send you a message. Um, I believe it tells you to punch in a four digit code and we've all had those kinds of experiences. The last one I'd like you to consider doing is, as you can see down here on the bottom, there's a registered service area on the left-hand side and an other services area on the right-hand side. Right now you can see I've connected my Google Drive, my Skype, and my Twitter. I haven't bothered to collect, connect my LinkedIn. Um, one of the things I would strongly encourage you to do is connect your Google Drive. And the reason I say to connect your Google Drive, the other ones it doesn't matter that all, all that much for students. But with your Google Drive, because our email server that we use here at Toro for students is a Google server, you have access to Google Docs. And I know many of you use Google Docs for completing your assignments. And right now, in order to submit an assignment, you would either, in the comment box in the assignments, you would select a, um, you know, you would put the URL for the uh, document that you're trying to submit to your instructor there, and then you've got to make sure they've got permission to look at it and that kind of thing. Uh, or you could download the document as a MS Office file, so as a Word file or an Excel file or as a PowerPoint file, but oftentimes that screws up the formatting a bit for you, so when you do upload it, while well, the content remains the same, the look and feel of it is a little bit different, at least when the instructor looks at it. If you connect your Google Drive, so with Google Drive being over here, if you were to click on Google Drive right here and then add in your the Google Drive that's associated with your at tu.edu, what that will allow you to do in Canvas when you're submitting an assignment is you'll actually get the option to submit the file directly from your Google Drive. And what Canvas will do is Canvas will go in and make a copy of that file and import it into Canvas the way it stands the moment that you submit it. 
So it doesn't matter if you were to delete the file later on. Your instructor still has a copy of it. Um, and that's important for us uh, here at Toro University because we have to go through accreditation every so many years. And one of the things that we have to do with that accreditation is we have to present samples of student work. So having access to this material is useful. And um, if you were to just provide a link to it in your Google Drive, the once you leave Toro and your account is no longer active, the Google Drive won't be there anymore. Or if you were to remove the file, obviously it's lost. So I would strongly recommend that you connect your Google Drive so that it shows up over here on the right-hand side under Registered Services. So once you've changed these settings, and the reason why you want to change these settings is if you look up here, again, in the left-hand side, on the inside navigation bar, the top option is notifications. So if you click on notifications, what it allows you to do is it allows you to decide exactly how you will be notified about various course activities. So here's all the different things that Canvas can notify you about. All these things over here on the left hand side. So and then on the right hand side it shows you all of the ways in which you've registered so in my case I've registered four different ways I've got my TU email address which automatically happens I've connected my Twitter my personal email address and my cell phone and I can decide if it's going to And you can see there's four options the check marks mean that they will notify you right away the X's mean that they won't send you anything so as you can see here now I'm not getting anything sent to me you can get daily summaries from all of your courses or weekly summaries from all of your courses. Now, as you look through these things, some of them may be things that you want to know about right away. For example, if there's a change in due date, that's something I'd want to know about right away. And the easiest way to get a hold of me right away is by my cell number. So I might use my texting to be notified about changes in due date. You know, when it comes to grading, I might want to know that the grades have been posted. And it's not something that I need to know right that second, but I'd like to know sort of immediately. And I check my personal email address a lot more frequently than I check my TU email address. So I might decide that I'm going to be notified right away about grading when it comes to my TU email address. If there are changes in course content, you know, new things being added, that's something that I might just want a daily summary for, and I might just want it to come to my TU email address, because I do tend to check that one once a day or once every other day. So, you know, as I'm going through, you know, these different options, uh, a new discussion post in my topic, I might want to know about that as soon as it happens, but I might want to just send it to my university account. That way I don't get too much traffic from it. Um, you know, so you can look at all of these different options that you have here and decide which ones that you would like to be notified about and how you want to be notified and the frequency that you'd like them to be notified. So these are some of the things that I'd strongly recommend that you consider doing.